word soul in him. And he has a different soul for every job that he does. Hey Jack, what's wrong with you there? Nothing wrong with me. By the head of yourself and the bar of our mouths, give it me. Come out here. Ah, we're a lot of mother's friends there. And all the petty colleagues. I took places with you and your petty colleagues. Come out here, I want to speak to you. What's wrong with you? You're skinning your knuckles in the washing room or what, then? I'll skin the knuckles in your music box if you haven't a lot of manners to be before. Where's that guy who's hiding here? Who's Sparkler? I suppose he's up in his yard. Why, what do you want him for? Because if I knew where he was, I would know where to look for me page. Your page? Are you reading or not, Mom? No, I'm not reading. I left a dozen new ones. Rounded up from the paper I brought home to make it look on Saturday night. And they're gone. And he took them. And where is it? What are you taking for? You can find it all yet, but no one finds it. It's a job of iron of those that smell of me, Dougal. And there's a smell of bacon of that bit of paper. And it's gone. And if I have to put my clothes out to where I'm in the end, I'm dragging it back ah, in the field of skills. The dog never touched your clothes today. No, you're not a good smelly paper. And why can't you hang your clothes in the head like everybody else? You and your area and your fancy clothes pegs. No, I'll do the watch of where we are. And neither you nor your own couple of a dog will change me either. It's not the first time I've ever heard of it. Who's fighting? Who's fighting? Can a man not ask for his pegs, man? Without being accused of fighting? Ah, don't be annoying, man. Give us a much you'd be lying around for any day for sale. Anyway, the dog never took your clothes and pegs. And if I were a best born when I won, ah, by the Lord. Did you lose the pegs, Peter? You bought them only yesterday. No, I did not lose them. They were lifted on me when I was down at the way. I rolled in that iron hound. But I knew Reggie, as soon as my back was turned, he'd be back up to the gap. He'd be so lying in me come some of these days, and I'd give him a beat with a smell of bacon on that will lay on you, sir. Have you a pun there? I've me heard clothes make steamers come up here every Saturday. And I thought I was finished with that when I bought the pay. Go and do it with that that Mary Swan left the pictures on that end. Mary Swan? Was Mary Swan on here when I was out? Well, now, I saw her from only a year ago. She left her your one little party. I said that you were out, but you'd be back in a minute. And, and she looked around her, and she looked at a parcel there from beside the top. And she said to tell you it was all right that she got what you wanted. No, baby, sir, she did. Well, I fixed it. And damn it, that's the twentieth time she's been up here for her and thinks a man's only out to get me. I don't know how she knows or thinks that my hands turn a man does. Right. She's pretty sharp, all right. She keeps a good eye on you, Peter. Does she now? Well, I'll be for some of these days. And I told her in a different direction. It's not terror a man can't leave a thing out of his heart. For a bag of the room comes along and lifts it. But be that the one before that to be done. I see Molly Dreyer and then you watch him on up to the end. Where? I wonder what the end to you, devil is one. Nothing good anyway, I'm sure. Well, if you can find it, Peter, I'm not going to be caught here down in the shops. The last, they don't have me the last time they cut me and patched me out first. So want to give them another chance of jeering at me. What you about? They're no different from the rest of the room. Can't bear to see a man that's able to look after himself and love work. Them. Maybe you're right. But they don't find the fellow drawing them up and shall all the same. I, I, I'm off. Oh, that's what makes them real devils all together. Fellows like that let no one mind what they say. Hello, Peter. Yeah, I'm afraid you're stressed. Trouble off. The screen dried out this evening. Did you put any lobster balls in the bottom, Peter? What is it your business, whether or not? Oh, friends, don't worry. Wouldn't it be a shock if they could raise you out of the way? What do you want, Gemma? Oh, nothing much. We just took the stone down in the shop, and the postman gave us these letters. So we thought we'd get them up here. Now, it'd be good to you. What gentleman do you sound there with? Who wrote these letters to you? Well, Peter, we didn't open them, so we can't tell you that. It looks good to see you three years getting letters for the same kind of typewriter, you know, Do you want us to 
That's the case of Snoop Kipper, where there's a case of stamp on and drop and signature, where he signs the pay order. I don't know what you sure going to do, but I wouldn't get ready for the time of the thousand pound minute first. Well, you do it in one minute. No, no, it's not that. But one of them sticks to me for even enough of me. Well, I put my head together as well, and my ears to me, right? And my two hands, well, they go like two bunches of bananas. Purely I wouldn't stop off to speak to one of them. But they're not only really afraid of tether, whisper, drink for nothing but spend a man's money. Doping themselves with him and go round for them at the last clothes of all of the matters they start. Lord, lads, we were destroyed. The pair of all of us said, that was the paper and I was in it. They'll make an awful show round the whole district. Wait till they tell Mary Swan about this paper. You should be back with the bags in no time at all. Now there's an example of one of them for you. My God, when I think of that one. Imagine any fella tied up to the leg of that one. We should lift and borrow every damn thing about the place. And her little three fields away. Or an underground what did she love the lady she was living in the house with her body? They're not all like Mary Swan, you know. I know some nice lasses yourself. And they're all right when you know how to handle them, that is. I meet them at the races now and then. And some of them own some of the nicest dogs in the country. Dog? So that's what goes on at the dog. I doubt some of them isn't making a half hair out of yourself. You're brushed out about women as the way they go round, busting them and brushing them and cleaning them and tidying them. And putting things away for a man once supposed to be can't find them. If he's any out there, they won't let find a thing somewhere in my house. I can hardly find them from doing myself sometimes. <laughs> Aye, you can't do as you want them as well as around. Like putting your feet on the table or the like that. Did you know Tom Pink is with you? I did, uh, but she kept up an awful fuss after he got her. I've been him wanting to keep the goat in the kitchen at night. Oh, darling, you couldn't blame the hair woman for that now. So what harm is the goat going to do? And it wasn't of a great convenience to him and the this morning. But he didn't have to take trip into the cow for a wee drop of milk. But he had the wee goat beside him all the time before she came on the scene. Yeah, there's a point. Ah, say, look here. You two fellas sicken me. One of you is either too afraid or too shy. The other's too fond of his dirty, lazy habits. But none of you has the scope to stand and offer yourselves up on the altar of freedom. I'm a free man, with a free one of my own, and I defy any woman to come along and tie me to any different string. I'm not going to get it, bully your about Good time, thousand and nothing. 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 You go out and shout over petition, or for some schemer that wants them to Parliament to put an extra penny on a man's out of tobacco. But you can't see that the feeling of your own souls comes closer to you than any border, no matter what the pit may say. What says to you? Wouldn't yourself pit me and come down to that petition, lad? And wasn't the Jew that all extended to you like a heart attack? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. But wasn't it because I wouldn't stand and let the fear of a man's freedom that I took the part of the Lord's man? Now it's my own freedom I'm out to the fence. Look at that there. Get buried or get out. He dare carry any as good as you can either one law unless it suits himself. And I don't care who knows him. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Mary Swan. Good evening, Mr. Wayne. How are you doing? Good evening, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, I, I, I mean, 
Joe could even say, uh, is that the end of, uh, excuse me, miss? That's a terrible shade of mind, Mr. Winter. He's a nice fellow. He'd make a grand husband for someone someday. Ah, oh, Tom's all right. <laughs> but as for the morning, I think he'd jump off a cliff quicker. Indeed. It was some funny ideas about the ladies then. You know, he was telling us here today that he had gone about seven devils and then bad blacks and one woman and burned off. <laughs> well, it's a good job that all the men are the club. You're not that straight, Mr. Lee. Oh, I, I, I think it is. Indeed, I have not this one. I think that they're in there, fond of my own way, and I want them to be the same. If anything, it might just clash with my own Oh, Peter, I mean, Mr. Carmen is a great man. He's so outspoken and strict. And I'm just this. Now there's one. It would make any woman happy. Ah, the woman that Peter Jarvis make happy isn't born yet. You know, he's of an opinion a woman's never happy unless she's bossed a man. <laughs> the Pope of Rome wouldn't boss Peter Jarvis. Well, I don't think he's as bad as to say it was. Just that, well, he hasn't met the right woman yet. But when he does, he'll not know what to do with her if he's so proud. Now, the day that I see Peter Carmody and a woman in the I start to believe in fairies. You know, he tints women the way you take the long men. Give it away, fairy. And do you know what he thinks they're twice as dangerous as any long men? Well, it looks as if that's the way he regards me this evening. Look at the way he's got his pace. I'd better pick him up before I go. Well, whatever you like, miss, I have a couple of things to believe in on a windy good evening. Where the heart 
you're killing yourself. I can assure you the order is in no way intended as a reflection on your desirability as a tenant. It is merely meant as a step towards adjusting the balance of social justice in the country. Ah, what are you speaking about? How dare you come up to talk to us about justice or balance? If you are self harmed up on our scam and wants to do any balance, you can go and do it back with that somewhere else and not this. Smoking about for the peaceful home to fill them up. Come on, Peter. Come on, come on. My dear sir, what we have no intention of ever interfering your homes. We simply want to make them real homes. Homes after the last of children. Oh, the woman and the top of children. Now, when you're not content enough, not going to give it off when they're not wanted, but you want to play for Sunday. When you go home with that, you're not even sober you wouldn't be talking to us like that. Now you do. Go home where I won't be responsible for what I'll do with you. Now please listen. We'll listen for that. First it was mother. Now it's mother and sister. The next day one is to start a sewing class or something. Up and when you're fit. Or if you are standing or not amongst the public colours, chasing fellas out to be doing for a lot of women and spying and sitting and you bring it down to you. Good man, Peter. I'll shut up. That's all you're good for. Laughing and grinning and philandering at the door. Couldn't you speak up and not leave it all for me? Be you do. Women and children. And you're as bad. You standing there and dance this past 12 months as if you were dead. A fine pair of buckles I have to help you. Oh Lord God, he's going to tell an awful yarn when he gets into the office in the morning. I don't give a damn what he does. I'm off to be there. But sure, what could we do another way? Ah, I know it pinches the hand, he'd sleep it off. And anyway, it's best to let him do the talking. He's madder than any of the two of us. And, and the matter of honor is the more language he'd be brought. Maybe you're right. But I would like to be here when it comes to the next one. Well, dearest, anything you can do. It's a good job to use kind of pickers today. It's genius. Well, what else are you doing? What are you doing 
it up here, the snail in it. I thought I'd have it. Now we're not still learning. Mind your own business. I thought you went to your bed, did you? Did you want me to go to bed for your supper? <laughs> well, all the good would be going to bed, and you act me get outside me one day. Damn it, you must think I'm stupid. I love them. It's not the act easy at all. We're going to be looking at these photos here. Who's the casino? <laughs> <laughs> Go. Do you see anything to laugh at in that? You would think the amateur never seen a young fellow or a girl of old treasure done him before. Yes, Peter, and that's true. No, I don't. But maybe they know some of the men. Come on, Nick. What are you sitting there in the middle? Don't be such a pair of idiots. That's no concern. That's the girl that's going to marry you. Gear? Gear be down. She shoes a pair of monsters with all her and her hair is cut like a man. Yes, Peter, are they for stacks and we can drop? Well, glory be to God. Let's find it. Where did you get these? There's a whole load more there sent down from the council. You have to sort them out. Them's the candidates for the job. You hear Take away from them, Peter. Care to job. She shoes a mustache. Peter, you're most unkind. That's probably her lipstick showing up in the picture. Oh, such a show as we are, such a collection of nightmares. I was born in the grave of a holiday and then was born in the theater with their breeches and their hair do. Oh, this is going too far for the joke. Oh, Mr. Charlie. What are you doing up here after all that you said this morning? Ah, oh, sure enough. How could I go to bed and just know that you were back for a month? Sure, we came up to say that I was sorry. Oh, believe you me, she's sorry. Now, with the likes of this damsel here, and the man woman beyond Finland, the judge went to get their hands on him. And another week or so, we'll not know where we are. Are you game to come into the town of me and stand up for your rights to demand? I'll go to the court. I thought it was going to be as soon as the most of the plan here this morning, but I said, Now, I'm an earnest. This is a serious business. Are you here to come in and start up and make a man? I am, I am. What about you, Tom? Are you double? I want to be sure. I'm sorry that I see the state that I'm in. What's the rules and the the orders and the the resolutions? All right, then. That's set and right. We'll take a half day of work. And we'll go in and we'll let them see the lot of people so we can get ready to catch them. And you can go and bear it all around the whole country. Then anybody that's interested that these three cottages here stand as monuments to the freedom of man. Oh, Mr. Carmelite. Well? Can you please shake hands with me and say you forgive me? And I do a better eye on that old and proud mind in the future. How dare you? Look, let me make the peace to you. How dare you? I'm going. You watch around Rambler better. And who tell you it would be the key? Well, I only thought when I saw the devil. When you thought wrong. That's tomorrow's dinner I'm thinking of yet. Tomorrow's dinner? Aye. I'm thinking of swamp the loud man.
Oh, the word to express. Didn't I tell you so? Well, what is it? No, we have nothing to say about the councils getting married or getting it over. Yes, we will, of course, of course. Oh, because we're short of houses, and we think we should make room for married men first. What? What? Make room, I said, not a tomb. Oh, how dare you are. No, I'm not married myself. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to talk to you. No, I have nothing to say. Goodbye. Goodbye. <coughs> That's a four minute beer today. I'll go mad and I'll open up. Here you are, Miss Ryan. Sort this beauty show out and send it to your victims. Such a lot of offering. Red a girl won't even be afraid of them anyway. Come on. Good morning, Mr. Cunningham. You're food early today? Yes, yes. Early bird, you know, early bird. Must be awful weary right though. Have you today's batch of notices for a friend of bachelors? Yes, Miss Ryan has them all ready for you. How are you taking them? Oh, some of them seem more enough. More of them just laughed at me. But that trio of the Taliban, they'll give trouble, I'm afraid. Who are they? Carmody, Kirby, and Whelan. But Carmody almost assaulted me. He pulled notice up in my face and practically chased me down the road. You mean Peter Carmody? Be dad, you were a great man to help us from the call. Peter's a decent man, but by Joe, he has very mistaken ideas about the women or anything else he's up against. Why, what did the women do to him? Oh, nothing, I suppose. Just a woman cook, or maybe someone said to them. I suppose he's just built that way. He's very strongly built that way then. I never saw a man so enraged. Upon my word, I was definitely alarmed. And ah. I assure you, I am not going to be forward with any pleasure on my next visit to him. Ah, that's a far worse person his face. He's all right. He's a great anti petitionist He made a tremendous speech on his way out after Mass a few Sundays ago. I don't doubt it indeed. I don't doubt it. He can speak with emphasis anyway, whatever bit of the cavalry. Well, I'd better be off now. I hope we don't meet any bit of the cavalry today. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where does, it, where does his lordship get all the big words? You think it's bad in the dictionaries? I suppose I had better show those letters out to the chairman. Isn't he coming up here to look over them this morning? Oh yes, he wants to make himself up and all the letters for the meeting tomorrow. He'll be here soon. Have you got that letter from the department about the waterworks? Oh, no, I haven't.
Well, I'm not quite sure yet, sir. But I gathered that they were rather boring in case they may be the able to get suitable ways in the time of or something. Perhaps it's a question of an extension of the How dare you? How dare you? There was no word of that I get it. And you know damn well that's the direct opposite of what I wanted to see. I said, yes, Peter. Don't lose your camera with a man. Just tell them what you want to see in this city, is it? Nice and easy. How can you be nice and easy? And a fellow like that making a lay ready before I started to speak. Why you think, Jack? Now, Mr. Cameron, whatever your name is, you can't behave like that in this office. You must have proper respect for get out. Anyway, this isn't the time or the place for a deputation. You must make an application to be heard. And I'll see what I can do to get you here before lunch. Well, will you? Well, you listen to me now, Mr. My friend. I'm not going to stand pulling me heels outside your own meeting, waiting on you to be up your mind to let me in. Don't be a burden, now. Don't be a burden, or I'll call the police and have you removed. Call the room you like, but I'm not going to get here until I let you and that fellow there and the rest of your grand friends know that they're not going to move us about like a crowd of sheep any way you like. What on earth are you talking about? You know damn well what I'm talking about. You have made a holy and a divine show out of every decent fellow and man in the district that paid their rent in their rates and kept their own houses from fall. And you run on there muttering about getting married and getting out. You see, Mr. Skellen, we feel very strong with us. Particularly Peter here. We're not too keen on the idea of getting married if you know what we mean. And we thought we'd just call in and say so. Now I right, call. I couldn't live we get married, sir. I couldn't live with it. I never read the vendor a step away since we got the letters. What nonsense. Why should you want to marry? Haven't you got steady jobs and comfortable houses? What more do you want? I am quite content the way we are. I'm just like for stay content. Now you have no right to be content the way you are. Here you are, three fine able-bodied men who should be doing their duty for their religion and their country. Wanting to remain in lazy, indolent, selfish loneliness. Shame on you! Devil the loneliness is on us. Uh, how do you know that they are neither selfish or alone? Unless you want to call it selfish, you want to be left alone to mind your own business and not the business of the whole company. I'm surprised at you, Kevin. You were the man who made the blood and thunder speech a few Sundays ago about the border, aren't you? That's right. Well, you're a good nationalist. And a Republican, and everything else can even call. Yet here you are, kicking up a row and trying to write a rebellion over a work of national importance. Much greater than any border. I'm as good an Irishman as you are, Mr. Scandal. Always recognize the cause. Don't be that for when I'm posting always a matter of spouting about it either. Well, that's got nothing to do with the game that you're starting here. That's where you and your friends, my dear man, are making a big mistake. Has a lot to do with what you call the cause. Don't talk rubbish. What is it to you or any other man whether I get married or not? Well, can we not be allowed to live in our own homes in our own way without the council coming round matchmaking where it's not wanted? Sad and Russell Wise isn't going to shift the board of Peter. Shift the devil. You're as bad as he is. I the next politics with decency. I don't think I've got that man in any of you to do that. Now listen to me, the pair of you. I know that you are decent, straight, honest men. I suppose you think we're doing you a terrible injustice and in threatening to take your colleagues from you and make you declare it. There you go. Well, our point is this one. We haven't heard enough funds in this district to accommodate the working class population. And many of our houses. There are as many as twelve living in two rooms and one kitchen. We are doing all we can by way of building suitable accommodation, but we just can't build enough. We must see that married men with children get every opportunity to bring up their children in decent Christian surroundings. Aye, that's fair enough, Mr. Stanley. But just a minute. You and a couple of you are. You and a couple of other fellows like you have comfortable houses. I know you pay your rents and your rent will look after things all right. How can we stand over one man with no responsibilities having a whole house all to himself? 
while little children are growing up delicate and puny for want of proper living accommodation. Yes, but why do you want to hurry these ones to fill up their houses and have them the same as the rest? That's what I want to know. Oh, no, you're not an artist. You know as well as I do that the working man of the large family is the backbone of the nation. Not only must we provide for them, but we must encourage other men to marry, so that they too will take their proper place in building up a virile state. We'll give none of our houses to any man who's not married, and we'll let no single man who's already a heaven stay, unless he's prepared to fall in line too. Good night, take a water. Well, you can't say that you mean well, Mr. Stillman. But it's hardly fair to myself to offer the rest of the lads here. But I have no learning to forge this marriage. Not every man is a, a liquor for matrimony. That's it. That's it. No man should dare give up a stick and leave to the house in the fall. Oh, I remember when I was a young Jesuit at school. A Christian brother came round to see a very little one of his wife. What are you laughing at? And he warned us above all. If God hasn't called you to see the state of life, don't attempt to cut them. Mr. Scandal, none of us thinks we are being saved by God for a matter of money. As a matter of fact, we're damn sure we have them. I'll rubbish. At least I think you must understand things. You have a job, a house, and your health. And there's only one thing missing from you. And that's a good wife. And her you'll have to get. Or leave the house. That's what you think. You have no respect at all for what the Holy Brother said. You're ordered us into the state of life, and you don't even know whether we have a common for it or not. God forgive me, you know, and I seem like he's given us a common bit of whether we like it or not. Ah, uh, there wasn't any in it. Maybe he knows what's better for us than God Almighty. Not only like having an opinion of yourself. Now look here. I have tried to be reasonable and patient with you, but you're not in the mood to listen to reason. If you want to go your own selfish way and have your own selfish view, well, you won't. This council is determined to protect the assets of the nation and the bit of assets that it has with its children. Now get married, or get logic, or do whatever you like when we get out of this council before you quit. I make any more of my time up here. Come on, lads, before you decide that there's two ways to be. Well, Mr. Scanton, you don't know enough to preach and to convert books, I know. Come on, come on, I'm something a bit stronger to put into that. Good day, Miss Ryan. Good morning, boys. I think they were over about the church this after telling you. Maybe, to be thankful to you. Yes. Well, we come in to stand up for our rights. And we finish this book when the Reverend Scanton has given us a sort of a mission. Well, all I can say, Mr. Scanton, is whatever you practice, don't start preaching. And why are you hurt? Posies in the water, but they generate posies, Peter. Them's 
Look here, he was it for space that he had a vision? What did he do with an estimate of dates and forks? And where's the butter? I must be blamed. The butter's on the dressing table, and the knives and forks are where they ought to be in the drawer. And not came among them dirty nails in that filthy box on the kitchen table. No, Mr. Jenkins, protector. Yes, I am protector. And I don't know how you're alive today with the dirty, filthy, careless way that you keep your kitchen and your food. No wonder you're the cross eyed devil you are. Me? Me cross? There was a quieter man on Ireland. I'm candy. But I'm never alone. Aye, it's a wonder you didn't get left with your anything but a slave angel. Don't give me that impertinence. Don't talk to me like that. I'm worse to be standing here listening to you, or wasting my time with a hard nosed sinner like you. Go. Go back to you. Do you think I'm going to be running across the fields for the next week asking you what you've done with us at the hall of your property? Come back here and show me where you've made a few more jackdaws nests from the things. Look for them, and if you can't find them, get some of them lasses from England to start for them for you. Come back here.